hi guys welcome to another video it's Ndagiri here thanks for coming as always for the subscribers thank you so much for your time i always appreciate it guys there's someone doing something outside please excuse the noise well today's video is something that i find funny we see a lot of our african leaders talk about things and we we get hyped and we're like yes they are on the right track but hey they're the same people that turn around and do the complete opposite of what they actually talked about make it make sense guys recently um there's a summit that is going on in china where of course uh, china wants to take over the u.s and partner with africa to you know of course control our resources that the people of africa don't even know about because i mean who signs contracts who goes and sells our resources of every single day it's our people it's our african leaders like they are uh, actually they flew to go to china and i'm like hmm interesting bye guys watch this clip come back and let's talk about it major african leaders are meeting with chinese president xi jinping this week publicly this is an effort to strengthen relations between china and the african continent but the real target might be to push the u.s dollar out of africa there is a geopolitical war brewing behind the scenes and africa has found itself in the crossfire but could this benefit africa let's talk about it this week china is bringing in the heads of state from nigeria south africa mali congo and others to convince them that china not the west are the true friends of Africa, and they want to lay out a long-term roadmap for how Africa can develop without relying on Western groups like the IMF or World Bank. But why does China care so much about Africa's future? Because they want to undermine the West. China hates that the West has the ability to control trade, that they can threaten sanctions at will, and that the West has embarrassed them on the Taiwan issue. But for the past few decades, they have been powerless to challenge the West on these key issues and have had to play nice with Western leaders. That is because the West has two major assets on their side, the US dollar and the euro. Being the world's dominant currencies, this allowed America and Europe to create nearly limitless amount of debt without experiencing hyperinflation. This allows the West to fund their enormous military budget while at the same time providing Western companies with the capital resources that makes them very difficult to compete against. How does Africa play into the storyline? Africa controls the most important raw resources in the world and if they were to favor BRICS, this could potentially end the dominance of the US dollar and the euro. This would mean that the West could lose their ability to fund their global military military presence, which is China's dream outcome. This would take decades, but China is known to play the long game. So how can Africa benefit from being in the middle of this geopolitical struggle? Both the West and BRICS are likely going to be willing to offer anything the African nations want to win their favor. This could mean debt forgiveness, favorable trade deals, infrastructure projects, and even advanced military technology. It is critical that the African nations don't sell themselves short and settle for a quick deal. They should play both the West and BRICS against each other in order to achieve the best possible outcome. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you think African leaders are up for the challenge of negotiating with both the West and BRICS, or do you think they'll sell themselves short? Chinese President Xi Jinping announced a substantial financial commitment between China and Africa. This includes $51 billion in financing and backing for 30 infrastructure projects across Africa. This was a much bigger move than the West expected and part of BRICS long-term strategy to push Western influence out of Africa and it looks like it could be working. President Xi also pledged $70 billion in new investments from Chinese companies in Africa over the next few years. On the political side, China has entered into new partnerships, notably with Libya, where a strategic pact was announced, and Egypt with a $14 million investment in joint projects. These investments highlight China's goal of securing long-term alliances and promoting the Belt and Road Initiative across Africa. So what happens now? The West has found its itself rapidly losing political capital in Africa as their push for social reform and debt obligations have been wildly unpopular on the continent, with many up-and-coming leaders looking to BRICS as a better alternative. For the West to continue to have influence in Africa long-term, they will need to reevaluate the way that they conduct diplomacy. This may be difficult, as Western special interests tend to dictate political diplomacy, and those groups will likely prefer a more profitable short-term strategy as opposed to long-term alliances. But I want to know what you think. Do you trust that China and BRICS will be able to deliver on their promises, or do you think the West will find a way to win back Africa's favor let me know in the comments below as I said in the video that is what is truly going on right now and I must say I'm so disappointed but I mean I'll keep on being disappointed because until we the continent have the real leaders that actually want to better the countries of Africa we are still going to be in this kind of a setting because I mean it's been the Europeans and then you know the Americans and you know other groups of people that have been coming in and taking over our resources and of course taking things or taking advantage of what is in the African continent continent beat labor you know yes resources uh, industrialization even education religion all those things but then here we are with china doing the same thing and it's really sad that we are in 2024 
but still our leaders in 2024 have to get on flights the heads of states of african countries have to get on flights to go to a specific country to talk about what needs to be done in africa like it's really confusing i thought it should be like vice versa where it should be like the chinese or the europeans or these other groups of people to come in like the summits of african countries and talk about what needs to be talked about because i mean that's respect right if they want to come into africa and talk about african issues they should be right here right right on the soil of the motherland but it's not what is happening and it's crazy because i saw the president of kenya the same person that came on the platforms of these streets of the internet and talked about how we are never going to go and like why should we as african leaders go to other places in in big numbers to talk about what has to happen in africa and this is what he had to say we have made the decision that it is not intelligent for 54 of us to go and uh, sit before one gentleman from another place. And, I mean, and, and sometimes we are, we are mistreated. Yeah. You know, we are loaded into buses, like school kids, you know? And, and it's, not, it's not right. But he's the same man that is in China right now to talk about what needs to be done in Africa for development to happen. Make it make sense. Like, I always tell you guys, we will keep on blaming other groups of people because they know where to touch, they know where to press, they know what to do. They just have to come as them to your people who have no respect for themselves, who can't do better for their countries, who, who just want to eat. Our leaders love to eat. It's their specialty. It is their specialty, and I must give it to them. Because, I mean, even the man that said he doesn't have to go to talk about African issues in other nations, the same man that literally went to China yeah, to talk about African issues, it makes you wonder. You know, do these people ever come out and talk about things that really make sense? I mean, I must give it to them. The only time they want to come out and talk about something that makes sense is when they're talking about sex. Yeah, the homosexuality, LGBT, Q, Q, Q thing. Yeah, <laughs> that situation. They are very strong on it. They are very, very, like when it comes to sex, African leaders can bend their heads and hands and probably give off their chairs from leadership not to accept those things. That's the only time I see the power of African leaders when it concerns the LOBDBTQ, yeah, that, that. That's when they are very strong. But when it comes to really putting boundaries and putting themselves in a place of being respected, it's, it's nowhere to be seen because tell me why all or most African leaders have to travel to leave their continent of Africa as the leaders and the president of those states to go and talk about African issues. Like, why is it always the Arab summit, African leaders go. Now Chinese summit, African leaders go. There was a Korean summit, African leaders went. There's the Europeans and the American summits. Always African leaders are the ones that have to go. The same leaders that were literally put on a bus, in a bus, when the late uh, Queen of England passed on, these are the same leaders that claim and want us to see them as leaders of Africa. Like, they could not even be treated as that special when they went for a burial of the same lady, of the same woman that was in charge of most of the colonization that happened in most of the nations of the world. Like, make it make sense. Those are the same leaders. These are the, these are the leaders that we have. Like, they always have to be put in positions where they don't make us feel proud as African people. And it's funny at this point. Like, I find it funny at this point. When are these people going to ever get some self-respect? I mean, it's okay to do business with the world because, I mean, we are intertwined. We are connected. Like, there's no way we can wake up one day and be like, oh, everybody else out of Africa is just Africans. Like, it's never going to happen. That's not how the world moves economically, socially, or even, like, in any other form. We need to... To work together with other groups of people is just what it is like it is it is what it is but like why can't our leaders why can't our governments why can't our countries in africa have some respect where they can sit one day and be like you know what if you want a summit that has to involve us as a people that our people also need to understand what it's about coming to Africa, coming to our countries. Let us cost you. You are the one that need us. Because, I mean, Africa feeds the world. Like, everybody knows we feed the world. Even today, when it comes to scholarships, like, there's always a lot of scholarships of children that are taken from the African continent to go to the West because they always take our minds also. It's really sad looking at these kind of things, but, I mean, China wants to compete.
it with the US because of course they want to be on the global control of the market of everything that is going on. So it is competing with the US uh, over Africa. Like it's the scramble of Africa in a different way where I mean, at least China, like I don't want to say like they should come into Africa, but as a Ugandan and I see the things that Chinese people are set up or the things they set up to give our people employment. Yes, maybe they are not using the armies, the weapons that these other groups of people use, but I mean, still they are coming to take over because the land is given to them by the government. Yes, they are setting up things that are big in the continent, but who is in control of those things? Like you can never find African or like Ugandan managers in big positions. They always put themselves, like it's the Ugandans that are always on the bottom. It's just not okay for for us because we need to be in a position where we have uh, we have things owned by us and to also empower African children that we are able to make it as well as a people because I mean if our African leaders are going in buses and going to other countries like like children to talk about their own countries how are we going to be respected when these people come and set up businesses into our continent? Like, does it make sense? Because if they see that your leaders are disrespected by other nations, do you, do you expect those same people to come into our countries and respect us and give us, like, this this dignity that we want? Like, do, do we expect that? I don't think so. I don't think so. So until our faces or the faces of leadership of Africa get in a position of really stepping into their power like West Africa is doing, especially Burkina Faso, we are still going to be crying. And this is why I'm so much happy when it comes to those West African countries where they are trying to come together and start to control their own resources and minerals and, you know, empower the youth, empower the young African children. Because, I mean, we all know Africa is growing into being the biggest populated uh, continent with majority of the youth. And they also know it. They also know it. That's why they want to come in, set up these things and use, of course, our labor, our youth to better themselves. But is it benefiting us if you look into it or is it benefiting the other groups of people? I mean, they also know that we are going to have a big population. By 2035, the continent will have the youngest and the largest workforce in the world. And that's the future. It's not a challenge. It's a massive opportunity. You just think about this, a massive talent pool for virtually every single industry which is facing a labor shortage. But that takes an investment in education, in skills, in knowledge transfer, but it also means getting behind young people. Just like the examples you heard earlier today on the, on the other panels, getting behind young women and their ideas. That's where the action is. And when we look at the programs that we are engaged in, part of, we are already seeing results. And I think the biggest challenge facing the continent is that so many people, unfortunately, have an outdated picture of the African continent. And it's time to change that narrative. The fact that they also know that, and we pretend like our leaders pretend like they don't see it, is crazy. It's just beyond me. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think about this. I mean... Are we going to get any freedom yet with these leaders that we have? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Guys, that is it in the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'm always posting. And thank you for the super chats and the members. Thanks to everyone that really puts their time to the channel. I appreciate it. I will see you in the next video. Bye.